Okay, it's one o'clock, we can get started. Um, hi, I'm Gina Canarosi from the Chemistry Biology Pharmacy Information Center. And today I'm giving the fourth lecture in our 30th anniversary series. And the lecture today is on Grammarly and Grammarly Go. Um, okay. Why is that not moving forward? Okay, so what is Grammarly and uh, what is Grammarly Go? Well, you can find them at Grammarly.com and what they are is English language only um, AI powered tools that can check the grammar and spelling of your written texts and make suggestions about how to write more clearly. So basically it's an automated proofreader. They work on the freemium model. So that is, there's a free version that has some basic functions. And then if you pay more, you can get the premium model. Uh, the premium model is not cheap. It costs 144 euros a year. And um, for me, it's worth it because I edit a lot of texts. They also have a business version and I won't talk much about the business version, but the business version, the idea is that you pay per person, you have an on-site manager, the manager can set up and update a style guide and create responses to common problems, for example, if you need to answer emails, and this aligns your team on brand tone and style, and it also helps to get a consistent tone across different writers. They also provide analytics with the business version. Okay, so what is the difference between Grammarly Free and Grammarly Premium? Basically with the free version, you get spelling, grammar, and punctuation help. So um, it doesn't sound like a lot, you get that with Microsoft Word, but what you get with Grammarly is a lot more. So they find um, mistakes with my grammar 100% of the time, it finds all the Oxford commas, for example. With the premium version, you get a lot about style and tone. You get engagement suggestions. If you use the same word over and over again, then they will um, flag that and say, maybe you want to change the word so your text is more engaging. They give clarity suggestions, especially if you're overly wordy or they flag the passive voice and uh, maybe you want to keep the passive voice, but all the passive voices are flagged so that you can make that decision yourself. Before you open a document, you can choose the tone. So they give tone suggestions. Are you, um, do your words sound how you want them to be? Are you confident? Are you friendly? And they also have plagiarism detection. Uh, so how do you use Grammarly? First, you need to make an account and then you can access Grammarly in three ways as a browser extension, as an app for Windows, Mac or mobile or via the online editor. So here I use Firefox as a browser and I've installed the Firefox extension. Um, so you can see when I open up Gmail, then I have these red underlines in the, in the text and this is Grammarly telling me mostly where I have correctness errors. Um, for each website that I open in the browser, I can turn it on and or off. Maybe I don't want, um, Grammarly reading all of my email. In that case, I can turn it off. And I also have some customization for every website. Um, the second way to use it is through the app. You install the app on your computer. And then for example, I have the uh, Microsoft Word plugin. So then it will open Grammarly inside the um, Microsoft Word. So here you can see I have a document and it's flagged some issues that it finds in green, blue, red, and there's also purple in each of these uh, issues is a different kind. For example, red is correctness. There's a spelling, grammar, or punctuation issue. And these are usually, um, usually always correct. Then it's found some places where it thinks the writing could be more clear. And one of these is the passive voice and one of them is some wordiness and some unclearness. Then you have engagement. It's flagged some overused words such as important. If you call things important, of course, everything is important. It'll give a suggestion rather than putting important right here. And then the purple, which I don't have in this example are um, 
delivery? Does it come across like I would like it to? So you can see when I open up um, Grammarly in the Microsoft Word, I get this little icon and this icon tells me I have 11 issues. If I click on it, then I get a list of the issues and we'll look at that in a live demo. So I can also um, use the online editor at Grammarly.com. You can see here, I, either I open a new document and type into it, or I can upload a file that's kind of standard. But for each document, then I set the goals of my document. How do I want to communicate? What is my audience? Is it an academic audience or a general audience? What's my intent? Am I just trying to inform people? Or am I trying to convince them to do something? And then you have from general to expert and from informal to formal. So for each document, you set this and then it can um, choose the delivery to match what your expectations should be. Since um, April 2023, a little later in Switzerland, there's been Grammarly Go, which is um, AI assisted writing and Grammarly. So uh, this I use a lot. I think it's a very useful tool. It's built on GPT-3. So we all know how GPT-3 operates by now. It's current up until September 2021. You can have it write a text, but it will be based on old information. I don't use it to create text as much as I use it to correct text or to get ideas on how to correct text. Um, so the AI assisted writing is included in all the versions. You get more prompts or more um, chances to use it in the uh, premium version. And again, when I set it up, I set up my voice. This is how I want to uh, sound usually formal and confident. And I'm a medical professional, not really, but they didn't have scientists. Uh, Grammarly Go shows up as this little green light bulb, and we'll see how it works in just a second. So they give this as the reasons to use it. You can use it to compose a text. I don't use AI to compose text. I do use AI to rewrite texts, and I think it's extremely useful here. You can generate ideas or use the built-in prompts, or they have their own set of prompts that are geared towards writing um, business or um, professional texts. Um, so that's the conclusion, but let me go to a live demo here where I've taken a text and this text came from the ETH news. Um, it's in the ETH news webpage right now and it's about generating clean electricity with chicken feathers. So apparently, um, Chicken feathers are a big byproduct, and now they've found a way to use these. So first, when I put the text here, you can see I get all the underlines. That means there's issues. If I click on a um, issue, then it pops up over here in the list. The other thing I can do is pop on, uh, click on the list, and then it'll highlight the text over here. So let's look at the first one. The first one says basically that researchers are using chicken feathers to make fuel cells more cost effective. And they say, maybe it would be more concise if I change that to use. If I change it to use, it would be researchers use chicken feathers to make fuel cells more cost effective. I don't like that change, so I'm going to dismiss it. I think it's current, it's happening right now. I'm keeping it as are using. So I click on that and it moves to the next one. The next one is interesting because I also think this sentence is a little bit unclear or hard to follow. They have made this suggestion. The sentence reads, the food industry generates enormous amounts of waste and byproducts, including from poultry production. I would put here, including those from poultry production, you need a pronoun to refer to the waste and byproducts. But what they found is, the food industry generates enormous and they want to remove amounts of. This is usually okay because if you generate waste, you would generate it in an amount. So you don't need to say I'm generating an amount, an amount. But if you continue on, they would also say the food industry generates enormous byproducts. And that means they're generating byproducts, which or 10 feet or 20 feet tall, which is not what we wanna say. So this one I would also ignore. And if you say including poultry production, that's saying 
poultry production is waste and byproducts. So neither of these two I like. However, I think this is a good case for Grammarly Go where we can use the AI assisted writing to um, fix that. So when I highlight this, um, this thing, it should pop up with a little, let's get rid of that. I don't wanna adjust my settings. It should pop up with a little light bulb that will allow me to change this. There it is right there. So I click on this and now it says, this sentence, I wanna improve it. And now he gives a, another suggestion here. And I find when I'm working with Grammarly Go, this is what I do the most. I don't take what they say. I uh, take a combination usually of what I think is right. And maybe I get some ideas from them. So what did they say here? The food industry produces a significant amount of waste and byproducts, particularly in poultry production. So, um, that one is okay. I can ask them to rephrase it and they'll give me a few different ways to say the same thing. And then I can read through these and choose what I like. So I find when I'm editing other people's texts, which I get a lot of texts to, um, to edit, then I usually, if I can't think of the way I wanna say it myself, sometimes you have a sentence that has a lot of little components to it and you have to get them in the right order to make the sentence sound perfect, then I can usually get some good ideas from using this. So um, that's the live demo. And I think in conclusion here, play from current, is that current? Yeah, I think. What I just like to say are these are tools, they're useful tools if you work a lot with text. For example, they find 100% of the Oxford commas. They always find things that I take the changes. Um, this rewrite feature is of Grammarly Go is the one that I use the most. And so most often my, my outcome is a mix of my edits and theirs. And again, with all of these AI supported tools, it's a tool I'm responsible for my texts and my edits. So I never ever take what they say without careful consideration. So that's the, um, the um, coffee lecture. We have a coffee lecture card. You can email me if you'd like to have the coffee lecture card. And I'd like to remind everybody that Leo Betchart is going to talk about science of synthesis tomorrow. Um, same, same time, same place. Okay. Thank you very much. If there's any questions, just unmute, unmute and um, ask or put it in the chat or any questions in the room. <laughs>